This is why the Titanic never really sank. In 1898, a man named Morgan Robertson wrote The Wreck of the Titan. The book is about a massive luxury liner deemed unsinkable that was going too fast in the North Atlantic, hit an iceberg, and sank. Wait a second, wait a second. The month it sank was April, and almost all the passengers die due to lack of lifeboats. Sound oddly familiar? Almost 14 years after Robertson published that book, the Olympic, I mean, the Titanic would sink in April after hitting an iceberg and most would die due to lack of lifeboats. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention, just two years after the Titanic sank, the author of Wreck of the Titan would die from poisoning. On top of that, Morgan would establish the Federal Reserve Bank just a year later because all three of his competitors died on the Titanic. He was supposed to be on it, but canceled at the last minute, along with his friend Milton Hersey, who would later form the Hershey Empire. Oh, don't worry, there's more. All right, so in the early 1900s, J.P. Morgan was part of the British White Star Line Company. They built cruise liners, but back then the competition was stiff. Their main rival, the Cunard Steamship Company, another British corporation. At the time, they held the record for the world's largest passenger ship. So J.P. Morgan and the British White Star Line Company were losing the battle. As a result, they would enter into the giant ship war and built what the White Star Line would call the Olympic class ships. The Olympic was built first and was considered the lead of the three. They also had the Titanic and the Britannic. But on just its fifth voyage, the captain would make a wrong turn, hitting a British military ship. The massive ship would barely limp back to shore. Then, at a later trial, it was deemed the White Star Line was responsible for the incident. This would result in economic disaster for J.P. Morgan. Not only was he getting no insurance check, he had to pay for repairs and was sued. So what would he do? Take the newly built second ship, the Titanic, and switch it with the Olympic after repainting both ships. Then intentionally sink the Olympic, but make it look like to everybody that the Titanic sank. When in all actuality, it was brand new, sitting comfortably in the bay. Insurance fraud 101, fam. Oh, and by the way, this was all confirmed by an elderly gentleman on his deathbed. He was quoted as saying, the Olympic, not the Titanic, sank that day. But he didn't say anything in order to protect him and his family. So J.P. Morgan would intentionally sink the ship, which was the Olympic, not the Titanic, so he could collect insurance money and eliminate opposition to the Federal Reserve Bank. The competition being Jacob Astor, the richest man in the world at the time, and he was a longtime friend of Nikola Tesla. J.P. Morgan backed Thomas Edison. Isa Strauss and Benjamin Guggenheim, who were all opposers of a Federal Reserve Bank. I gotta say, that's an elaborate scheme, fam, but it's plausible, and honestly, I believe it. J.P. Morgan would go on to earn the title of the richest man in the world, and back the U.S. in the Industrial Revolution.